I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. Even at a school with as much tradition, history, prestige, and winning like Notre Dame, every now and then, a mediocre season can't be ruled a surprise. And after all, that happens just about everywhere in college football. But four and eight? Are you kidding me? Four wins and eight losses last year for Notre Dame? I mean, just five years ago, they were playing for the national championship. But last year, they fell flat off the face of the earth, and it was their worst season since 2005. And I think amongst the problems that they had last year, the biggest problem, they couldn't find a way to win the close games. In fact, of their eight losses, seven of them were by eight points or less. That's right. Seven of those eight losses were by just one score. Yeah, that uh, rough of a year in South Bend. And look, in my opinion, I think Notre Dame has the highest pressure for a head coach to win. I think it's been that way for a long time. So you might think a 4 8 record would get their head coach fired. But remember, Brian Kelly did something very smart last year. Signed a contract extension, keeping him there until the year 2021, making it a little more difficult for the Notre Dame higher-ups to fire him, you know, right away. Um, still got five years left to go after all. That's the way you can look at it on one hand. And remember, too, that this is the same school, Notre Dame, that had to pay Charlie Weiss over a duration of time $18 million after firing him just eight years ago. So nothing worse than have to pay somebody $18 million for doing nothing. On the other hand, though, Notre Dame's got the money to fire any coach that they hire at any time. All right, even if they do have as many years on that contract remaining as Coach Kelly does. But they didn't fire him now. They're willing to give him a little more time. How much time, I don't know. And they did require changes to that staff. And I will tell you this. Even though I'm not a Notre Dame fan, even though I don't live in South Bend, Indiana, I'm not a Notre Dame historian by any means. But I can tell you one thing about Notre Dame. Okay, with what they expect, Coach Kelly has got to show massive improvement now. Because I think if it's just slight improvement, or if they don't improve at all, I think regardless of how many years left on that contract, uh, they'll can him. So this is a very big year for Coach Kelly. And he will have a lot of new faces on that staff. In fact, or did you know for this segment, did you know of the 11 positions on that coaching staff for Notre Dame, seven of them are new. Seven of the 11 are new to the staff. We're talking about the new coordinators, even the new special teams coach, and the strength and conditioning coach is new. Just to name a few. We'll begin with the offense, though. We're going to talk about Chip Wong, who will be bringing in an up-tempo offense unlike anything Notre Dame's ever had. This means that when the play is over, you're going to see offensive linemen, the receivers, the running backs, the quarterback, all hustle to the line of scrimmage, getting ready to run another play, and they're just going to keep doing that over and over again, trying to always keep the defense on their heels. We'll see if this is the answer for Notre Dame offensively. A year ago, 31 points per game. Now, 30 years ago, that would win you a lot of games. But in this era, you know, over half of the college football teams in the country are scoring about that many points. You know, 31 points per game anymore, you know, doesn't always cut the mustard. And last year, it didn't for Notre Dame. They'll also have a new quarterback who has to get adapted to the system fast, and that is Brandon Wimbush, who only played two games last year. Remember, when it came to quarterback depth, Notre Dame was very secure in this area with Deshaun Kaiser and Malik Zaire. Okay? But... Even though those two QBs had eligibility entering this season, both are now not playing for Notre Dame anymore. In fact, you've got uh, Kaiser, who had two years of eligibility left. He decided to forego them to go to the um, NFL draft. And um, Zaire was not happy with his playing time last year. So his final year of eligibility, now he's going to go play in Florida at Gainesville for Coach McElwain. So this leaves Brandon Wimbush, 6'1", 226, Obviously, a guy that's going to be hard to bring down, strong arm, but he will be used as a runner as well. But for Wimbush, he's got to be careful because if he gets hurt, then the backup quarterback, yeah, is just a freshman. So that uh, could be a sign of trouble. But Wimbush, so far, Notre Dame coaches like what they have seen from him, and he'll at least be surrounded with experience. Talking about Josh Adams. Last year at this time had hamstring issues, but still finished 2016 with over six yards per carry, had five touchdowns, and had almost 1,000 yards rushing. Receivers, this is an area of strength, too, including one of the best in the country in Equinemius St. Brown. Nine TDs a year ago for the Irish. He was a highlight reel. He made defenders miss with ease. Very explosive. Equinemius St. Brown, one to watch this year. And also complimenting him, C.J. Sanders. Now, the offensive line, I think the left side is going to be the strongest of the two. In fact, I think 
Both guys on that left side are going to be playing in the NFL soon. We're talking about Mike McGlinchey, who decided not to forgo his final year of eligibility and come back to Notre Dame. Interesting because he would have been the high, one of the highest offensive linemen picked in this past NFL draft. McGlinchey at 6'8", 312. He's a beast, along with Quentin Nelson at the left guard position. Right side, not quite as talented, not quite as experienced. So for Notre Dame, again, it's going to be an up-tempo type offense with a new QB, but an experienced left side and a running game that's proven and a receiving core that should be exciting. Now let's talk about the defense, and the defense also will have a new man in charge. We're talking about Mike Elko, and he definitely has some work to do in this department because although Notre Dame last year, I wouldn't call them just a pathetic defense, they really didn't make a lot of things happen, though. They didn't have a lot of sacks, only 14 as a matter of fact, and Coach Elko is not used to that because at Wake Forest last year, his defense had 41 sacks. So he knows that there's got to be some work to uh, to be done. Linebacker is where they're going to be at their strongest, okay? That's where they got the most experience, including Niles Morgan, um, a very talented linebacker, led the team in tackles with 90, and also had four of the 14 sacks for Notre Dame. So he was very active, along with uh, Tavon Coney, who uh, comes back, and they'll also have uh, Greer Martini, a senior. So linebacker, I think they're going to be at the strongest, and they'll also use uh, Drew Tranquil, uh, to play that uh, rover position moving from the safety. The offensive line would be the biggest concern because last year they were not good in stopping the run, allowing about 180 yards per contest, and plus they lost a uh, player up front to the uh, NFL draft. So now you have Jerry Tillery, a junior, occupying a defensive tackle spot. He's got experience. He's a starter back. And Dalen Hayes, who in high school was a dominant linebacker, but they moved him to the defensive end spot for the Fighting Irish, and uh, last year as a freshman um, saw playing time. So you have Dalen Hayes um, with his quickness at a defensive end spot. From what I've seen, they don't have any seniors listed as far as the top two on the depth chart, in either corner or safety. So that can be interesting as well. But they are solidified, it looks like, at one corner uh, with a guy that played quite a bit as a freshman. That's Julian Love. They're pretty high on him. But the other corner... Pretty much a grab bag. They can go with Nick Watkins, or they can play Sean Crawford, who's had an injury riddle career so far with the Irish. He's already had two significant injuries in his collegiate career. And again, uh, no seniors in that top two rotation, at least not right now, as far as safeties and corners. They got to make things happen, too, because they were single digits last year in interceptions with Notre Dame. In fact, of their returning starters, none of them had more than one interception. As far as the Special teams goes, well, place kicking and punting, they're just fine. As a matter of fact, you can see those guys and their fine numbers coming into 2017. But as far as special teams coverage, they stunk in this area to Notre Dame. In some way, shape, or form, they allowed six special teams touchdowns. So, again, that is a position coaching change that Notre Dame made as well, one of seven. All right, let's take a look at the Notre Dame schedule for 2017. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but that's nothing new for Notre Dame scheduling. 11 of the 12 opponents went to a bowl game a year ago, with Michigan State the only one that went bowlless, and Notre Dame has to go there. The Irish would be expected to win that game, but it's no gimme. By the way, the Fighting Irish will also play the American Athletic Conference championship teams from a year ago, Temple and Navy, but both have to come to South Bend, so there's a benefit there. Temple's the season opener. Georgia is the second game, also at home, but the Bulldogs from the SEC will bring one of the best running talents to South Bend, we're talking about Nick Chubb. And Notre Dame last year did not specialize in stopping the run. They were bad in that area. You also have to go to North Carolina, but thankfully, if you're an Irish fan, you don't have to see Mitch Trubisky, the quarterback. He was the second overall pick in this past draft. The second half of the schedule looks tougher than the first, but at least you get two weeks to prepare for Southern Cal. Got to play at Miami in early November. Hurricanes will be better than last year. And it's always tough when you have to face Stanford. That's the season finale. Even tougher, you got to face them on the road at Palo Alto. The Vegas win total has the Fighting Irish at 7.5 wins. I'll go ahead and give Notre Dame the benefit of the doubt and say they exceed that, but I've got Notre Dame winning eight games. Hey, that's double the win total of a year ago. I think the offense will be exciting to watch with the up-tempo, but I think as far as the defense's progression, I think it's going to be a little bit slower. And again, that defensive line, trying to be able to stop the run, that's going to be a challenge, I think, all year long. Eight and four will be a nice improvement for Notre Dame, 
but it may not be enough to keep Coach Kelly around much longer at South Bend. That's my look at Notre Dame. Catch you next time.